Hi everybody, welcome to the Classical Odyssey or welcome back to the Classical Odyssey. Uh, this is the first time I am appearing in front of the camera. I decided to break the habit today, particularly because I want to thank you in a more personal way for remaining subscribed and also to thank the new subscribers. I know that I do not post with uh, very high frequency the videos. Uh, most of you know that I'm writing my dissertation, I'm writing my PhD thesis in geosciences. I'm also working and also on top of this, we all have to face the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which affects our lives in so many unpredictable ways. And so it's really hard to um, uh, consistently post something on YouTube since I have so many other urgencies in my life, but hopefully the videos that I post will offer you some content that will prove to be helpful and encouraging. So today's video is going to be very fun. I will be drawing something uh, very adequate, I would say, for the month of December. I'm going to be drawing the snow leopard that you see behind me. This is uh, something that I plan to do for, for a month now. Now, natural history illustration is something that I always love to do. It's uh, zoology illustrations are something that I've appreciated since I was very, very small. and. Um, I decided to share with you some of the things that I learned and uh, before I start the video I would like to mention that the greatest improvement that I've noticed in my art is when I stop following this paradigm that you see promoted on on social media platforms that you have to draw photorealistically in order to be a good artist. Now photorealism is something very very helpful because it obviously teaches you how to draw shapes and understand proportions but having to draw the pores of one's face or single hairs is merely copying an image not creating a work of art and the technique that a lot of people do is using a grid and transferring that grid onto the paper and then basically copying every single shape and outline that they see however this does not allow you to create gesture and movement in the painting and those things are created when you not only master the anatomy or master the knowledge of the subject in front of you, but you can also manipulate that knowledge in order to exaggerate certain things about it that make it appear as if it's alive. So I know that painting and drawing, they, they're static, they're 2D, but the idea is to create the illusion that you've uh, you've captured something alive that is moving, an instance of life, and everything in life changes. Even if it's inanimate matter, it still changes. So you have to have that philosophy. And sometimes you have to uh, stay away from the thought of trying to make everything pretty. Try to exaggerate things even though you don't like how it looks in the beginning. But try to practice gesture drawing. Gesture drawing and rhythm are probably the most important things in your artistic journey and uh, I drew this leopard in this particular ambiance I would say or uh, this particular background I used the style that I I developed in the past months because I was consistently thinking how can I develop a style in pen and ink that would differentiate itself from merely um, just doing something very accurate and tedious but make it look a little bit more painterly and try to basically make it look like a painting. And so this requires a lot of practice, but it's merely loosening up your arm and creating really fast strokes that look very painterly, like you use the dip in exactly as you would use a brush. Um, this is very difficult, it's still difficult for me, but I'm trying to develop this. Now, this is not a scientific illustration. And that's definitely not the purpose of it. Uh, if you're interested in science illustrations, I've I've done natural history illustrations. I also have a certificate and I can share some things uh, But today's video is all about creating painterly drawings that are artistic. They create some They they're an abstract representation of the real life They do not seek to copy life but to make an abstraction that appears to the eye as harmonious and is easy to read so uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I have to mention that I had some troubles with the camera. I think it's because of the angle of the light that I'm using for drawing. The light has been oscillating from warm to very cold, almost blue. I haven't figured out what exactly is happening, but if you know why 
please share that in the comment section below and let me know what you think and thank you for watching see you soon